Okay, we're here with uh, Ivo Burham, who uh, did the keynote today on uh, mobile journalism, which he describes as mojo. Welcome, Ivo. Yeah, hi. Um, and we've got uh, Tony here. Tony, you've had a bit of a feed. You're feeling better now, or it's about lunchtime? <laughs> uh, we've had our coffee and a bit of a feed, <laughs> so we're all good. We're energised up. We're all, we're all energised, ready to go. <laughs> and uh, just for our listeners out there, Ivo, could you talk a little bit about... Uh, like sort of in a nutshell what your mojo is and perhaps some of the work that you've done in the territory because it was really interesting stuff yeah yeah, okay well well, well, mojo's um mobile journalism short for mobile journalism and it's uh it's um um how do i describe it it's about it's using mobile mobile tools and journalism skill sets to empower people to have a more um to have a voice really so what we're trying to do is democratize communities through mobile journalism the, the, the examples you showed, because you do, you've done a lot of work up in the northern part of, of the Northern right. Territory, yeah. Um, the work that you do around the, you know, in, engaging people in those kind of activities, have you done much with schools or mm. into that area as well? Yeah, we have. Um, it, 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 look, my Mojo workshops are based on 25 years of working in this field and 30 years in TV. And, 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 and so what, what I always wanted was for them to become, um, have professional results for people to actually get work out of it and stuff like that. That's what we started and our first experiment was there. It was with the Indigenous people in the Northern Territory. So we, um, we um, um, all of them got work in a sense out of it and four of them got full-time work. So that's the first thing. The second part of the, the, the program was to find some sort of sustainability for it. And we've been looking in, in, in schools to do that. So we've worked in probably 30 or 40 schools now around the country, including Indigenous schools in the Northern Territory in Queensland. And, and we run the program in schools too, to students everywhere from year, s- year six through to year 12 and also teachers. Yeah, and, and you were saying that like from the educational point of view it would be great to start this off in the schools and then go out into the community. What's happened is that, that mainstream media have just bought in, they've just realised they're a long way behind the, behind the eight ball and uh, they now are running workshops for them. So what that does, it creates a synergy between schools and mainstream media, right? And it kind of validates it top down. Not that it needs validation, but but it does validate it top down. And it means that when you ring up, when a school's got a, a, a really interesting story they might have done just on the off chance, and they ring up a, a newspaper or something and uh, with a view to sending it to the newspaper for publishing online, and the newspaper online editor says says to them what's it shot on what's the first question they'll say an iphone and they go oh that's okay because our people are using iphones as well send it up and we'll have a look at it so it creates this this uh, common technology between the different yeah. i mean you spoke a lot about the way the technology is coming down and the sort of tool set you need can you talk about the sort of uh, tool set that you actually do in your mobile? yeah yeah well look you, you, you the tool set is uh, you what you either use i'm using iphone ipod iPad, depending on the environment, iPhone where you need 3G, you use the iPhone, but iPod, or, depend, and depending on how much money you've got. So the kit, and, and then there's a little owly, little device that you, that houses the iPhone or the iPod. Uh, and and it's I, got a directional mic on it. Well, it's a directional mic that pops into the uh, into the into the iPhone or the iPod, yep. but it has a little it has a little shoe, so you can put a little rechargeable light on that, and you can go to my website, which is www.burrammedia. Dot com dot au, and you can go to the YouTube, my YouTube uh, uh, site, which is How To Mojo, and you can see little videos about all this stuff there, and the tools are all demonstrated. So, so you can do that. But that's the basic toolkit. So, a little light, a little microphone, uh, tiny little mic. It's only worth twenty-five or thirty bucks. Does a great job, and uh, an iPhone or iPod with this little housing that gives it extra stability, so that you can tilt and, and pan. So the toolkit is pretty small. What's really important, though, is the app that I use. I use a, an app called First Video for editing, and that kind of gives you four tracks of uh, audio and two tracks of video. When I started in TV, we only had a track of video and uh, or two tracks of video and two tracks of audio, right? So it's twice as powerful as what we had, and uh, and also. Um, on the iPad, that very entry so low now. <laughs> Ten bucks, yeah. and, uh, and 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 also what I, what I uh, uh, that that app's available for the iPad as well. A little bit more money for the iPad, but you get six tracks of audio on the iPad. <laughs> six tracks. <laughs> um, I was interested in, in terms of when you showed you showed one of the videos there of um, the I think you said there were um, some you know elders the first time they created a video on bush medicine. Oh, yeah. And that was one of more, like, I guess, are you seeing that from... Um, <laughs> I, I, from, uh, I guess, from 
from the Central Sounds Desert region where I grew up, that was one of the things that we were always really keen to to get was that whole idea of capturing local traditional life. Yeah. Um, and you know, going back 10, 20 years, audio was okay, but the technology was really expensive. Are you seeing you know, Indigenous people suddenly seeing this stuff and going, wow, we can actually capture so much of our life in our storytelling yeah, yeah. format? Yeah, that, that's, that's the basic level. They're seeing that and they're seeing that like that. But what, and that's obvious. And what's re- but we've been doing that with people in the, in the Central Desert since 19, 1989. Yeah. Yeah. But, 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 but what's really great about this is the kids feel empowered. They feel like they've actually got a place in the community as a storyteller. It's a big thing in a community, but a digital storyteller. So it changes their lives. And I've got one of them now who's ringing me up and asking me to ring people that I know at university because he wants to go and study journalism. This is a big thing. You know, for a kid from remote communities to want to go out of the community, because, see, why this doesn't work in Bachelor, or Bachelor was involved in this, but it's tricky for Bachelor because they've got to get the kids to come in. You know, and a lot of these kids don't want to travel. It's really weird. They want to stay in their communities. So, you know, so this is starting to change that view for them? Okay, well, this is changing the view for one or two of them, but what it's doing is providing the skill set in the community so they don't have to leave. Yeah. That's the big thing. And that's the thing, isn't That's it? the big yeah. thing. And the skill set stays in the community. That's why I think app development, you know, for some of these, hey, yeah. with, around their digital yeah. storytelling, is, you know, a huge thing these guys should be Could involved be. in. Could be. Every, they're, they're very, they're, very, uh, they're adapt, they're, they're, they're pick up things very, they pick up things very, very quickly. But the key to this is is not the technology as much as it is the uh, storytelling, the journalism skill sets. That's the key. Everybody can pick up a phone. In uh, Umbacumba, on Groot Island, they've got no reception at all, but all the kids have got mobiles and they're using Bluetooth to, to Bluetooth stuff around, right? So they've got the technology. The question is the epistemology is why are we using it? What are we going to do with it? That's the real issue. And that's my point of difference. My point of difference is that I... I've, you know, I've been doing this a long, long time, and I kind of go, here's the difference. The difference is you, but what are you going to do with it? And so what we're... So you get back to audience, and you spoke about the website that you've put up? Well, we were actually starting to... Yeah, we were starting to. It's just very new. And it's called onesmartstory.org. So we think that one smart story could change somebody's life, okay? And uh, and really the difference is, is the people. So we're hoping that um, that'll kind of go live soon and we'll run a competition around the world for people making stories on the smartphone. Smart stories on the smartphone. Yeah, another trop fest, maybe. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah? That's a great idea. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, but, and I think that's the thing that, that I like about it, is just it taps into their natural storytelling. You know, that's that's everywhere whole tradition. You know, that in terms of their passing. Well, we're fighting that all around the world. We've run the workshops now all around the country here, and we're still running some with Jonathan. I'm running up north, but but um, we're running them in Timor, um, China, in uh, in in the UK. We're just about to start some in Canada, uh, in Denmark. We've run them everywhere, and, and the same reaction from everybody they've got because it seems so simple, right? And it is. It's a, it's a. It's an iPhone, you know. Yeah. You know, and that's what's key to it. But it's the skills that go with the iPhone. That's the that thing. That, that's the that jaw dropping stuff. The storytelling. Game. That's what's really key. The storytelling. And learning how to tell a beginning, middle, and an end. <laughs> learning how to compress. You see. See, I've worked for foreign correspondent in sixty minutes and all those programs. And I can tell you for a fact that if you if you learn if you learn to compress a story. It's much easier to learn to make a long story. If you learn how to make a long story, it's very hard to learn to compress. So what we're teaching is these skills of compression. We're teaching the kids to to um, to be ethical, to mind their p's and q's. You know, because you want your story to go up there. To make sure you don't defame anybody. All these skills are really, really important skills in life. Not just in storytelling. So like digital citizenship and, and social Correct. responsibility. Yeah, it's about the same, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's, it's what, yeah. roll up in the one. Very good. Yeah, it's exactly what it is. And so, so Mojo actually teaches you because, see, Mojos are immersed in the community generally. And so, so that's what gives their story the edge. And they've got access. But because of that, they have a great responsibility. They can't put someone off because if you put someone off. So you have to tell stories in a clever way. For example, one of our Mojos told a petrol sniffing story uh, during the, the, the anti Mojos workshop. Very tricky to tell in the community. But she, without even talking with me, decided to, to start it like a documentary, then go to a drama reconstruction. Where did she get this from? <laughs> so she got her girlfriend, so they created this drama reconstruction, which was too cool for words. And then she interviewed the elders of what they thought about it and intercut it with this drama reconstruction. And I, I swear to you, there was not a discussion with us about 
how she was going to do it. But she found a way of doing it in the community and not putting anybody off. And she knew her community. She knew her community, but also she lived in that community. And she had to make sure that tomorrow, after the film went to air, yeah. nobody was going to... Because there's so many issues that can come oh, yeah. if, if that's Hello. not handled properly. Hello. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But just all the learning. Yeah. All the learning that's occurred in that environment is amazing. Well, it breeds great citizenship. It breeds confidence. It, it breeds, like I said, the kids feel like they, they've got some worth in the community. Empowering, Sorry? Empowering. They're very empowering for them. They've got a place in the community. They're, now some of them, four out of, the, four out of the nine, have got regular jobs in media in their community. So the skill set has stayed in the community, which is really great. Because you know what it's like. A lot of people from remote communities leave communities to get trained. And when they're trained, there's no job for them in the community. So that skill set either goes out or they don't do anything in the community. They stay in the community and don't use it. This is a skill set that actually stays in the community. So you must be wrapped at, I guess, all the work that you've done now that the technology's, I guess, in everyone's hands. It's the pennies dropping for them. Race around Oz, you know, all those series. Yeah. Finally, finally, it's the first time I keep saying to everybody that producers' dreams and technology are finally married, right? They're kind of like that, right? There's no, you don't have to go. Oh, look, it is really good quality anymore. You don't have to say it because it's HD. So that, that question is not existing. So all you have to do is teach them those skills. That the, the thing that changes every day, is, you know this, because you work in the field, is the technology. You can't get the hand on But what doesn't change is the skill set. Irrespective of what some digifiers will, te- digifiers will tell you, the skill set is the same. When you put a story together, you still have to be mindful of the fact that it bounces along, that you give the facts, the beginning, middle, and the end. It doesn't matter whether you're making a digital story. Or you're making a storybook. Correct. Correct. It, doesn't matter. it doesn't matter, does it? And so the story skill set remains the same. So the one constant is the thing that you give them that will be there with them even when the technology changes. And that's story, story, story. Yeah. Fantastic. Excellent. Well, is that, yeah, that, that, no, is, that was that great. Excellent. Thank you. Now, and before you go, are there any other websites well, that you, you should, yeah, that well, did you recommend that people want to pursue this further? Yeah, well, you Obviously, can, uh, there Bar- is. Borough Media. Yeah, Borough Media, which is www.boroughmedia, which is B-U-R-R. No, B-U-R-U-M-E-D-A, <laughs> borrowmedia.com.au. And there you'll find some links to some other okay, places. Yeah. Um, and, um, and also you'll get to see some videos and stuff. But I think if you want to do it, have a go. It's really yeah. cheap to get involved. You don't even need to get the gizmo around the iPhone. All you need is an iPhone. You don't need a microphone. You don't need a light. You just need to... Capture the story. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. And then either... So, so from a school point of view, even the uh, iPod touches. Fantastic. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, because it's got some... Most of our workshops in schools yeah. are done on iPod touches. Yeah. Yeah. And we just did one it was done on iPads. You know, 40 yeah. kids with iPads. But most of them are done on iPod touches. Yeah. And it doesn't matter. It's, I, said, I said off the bat this morning, I think I said... It's, it's not about the technology. Yes, the technology makes it... A, it yes. enables it, but it's about the story. It's, right? a, it's about why you're doing what you're doing and what it is that you want to do and how you do it. I think that's the key to all this. It's a uh, story. Mm. Well, fantastic. Well, Ivo, thank you for sharing Good. your story with us today. Oh, uh, my I'm pleasure. sure our listeners appreciate it. Excellent. Good luck with it all, guys. And uh, go thank Mojo. You. Yeah, <laughs> thanks very Mojo. much. <laughs> Uh, and it's at Citizen Mojo when we'll tweet you when the episode's up. At Citizen that? Mojo, yeah, that's yes. the tweet. Apologies. So, so, so if people want to actually, uh, and tw- Twitter's really interesting actually. Twitter's the, 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 the one that actually works. You know, there was a, mm. there used to be a debate uh, about a year ago that was really rampant, which was that Twitter was useless and the Twitter was, oh, yeah. well, you it know. Just, depends what you want to read. Depends on who, you, who, who's, who you're following and who's following you, right? Yeah. Twitter can be a, a wealth yeah. of information, mm. a wealth of information. Yeah. And, uh, so I think people should get onto Twitter, actually. Yeah.